G'day guys, Rukshania, thanks for joining me for the news vlog. I hope you've all had a lovely evening. First up, I have a story that I can't actually share too many details with you. It's under a heavy suppression order from Victoria Police. And there was reporting on this earlier today, but even that's been taken offline now. So that's how serious this suppression order is, and it keeps getting tighter and tighter. So let me read this article from the Herald Sun and give you a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Police win fight to suppress key details of alleged kidnappers and torturers. A stunning court order prevents the Herald Sun from telling the public who has been charged, what suburb they live in, their nationality and religious background. Victoria Police have successfully fought to suppress key details of a kidnappers and torturers in a shocking alleged hate crime. The stunning court order prevents the Herald Sun from telling the public who has been charged, what suburb they live in, their nationality and their religious backgrounds. No photograph of the pair, one woman and one man, can be published along with a whole host of other important details relating to the case. Police sought the emergency suppression order on Wednesday afternoon, but the media were not alerted to the application as is required by law. Well, the order was rubber stamped by Magistrate Carolyn Howe. The Herald Sun intends to fight the order on public interest grounds and will ask for an urgent hearing as soon as possible. Top media lawyer Justin Quill from major law firm Thomson Gear said it was appalling to keep the public in the dark about such a serious, alleged crime. Perhaps the worst part of this suppression order was that it was effectively heard in secret in that no, no notice was given to the media, even though that is required by the Open Courts Act. So the magistrate was unfortunately deprived of the opportunity to hear submissions from the media, and as a result, the public's right to know and the principles of open justice don't appear to have been given enough weight. The suppression order was an extension of a previous order, which the Herald Sun has fully adhered to. The order was held in a closed court, and again, the media were not given not notice to appeal it. So very interesting. I can't even talk about this in further detail anymore. All I can tell you now is that it's related to an alleged kidnapping and a uh, torture, allegedly, according to the Herald Sun, of an individual in Melbourne by two people. I can't give you the religions. I can't give you the reasons as to why even. That's how much this story has been suppressed. Now, if you saw the earlier reporting on this, as it was reported in the Australian and also in the Herald Sun, I'm not sure whether those articles are still up, but other articles that subsequently were published related to this story on the Herald Sun have been removed. Crazy, crazy times. And hopefully, like this uh, lawyer said, that this suppression order is lifted because the media, uh, the Courts Act was not followed in this instance. Uh, it really seems the Victoria Police wants to keep this under wraps. And I have my guesses as to why the reasons might be, but even that I can't go into. And the craziest thing about all of this, even though I'm talking to you in this secretive language, international media is talking about this story. So as Melburnians, as Victorians, we cannot even discuss a story that relates to a public safety issue in our own state because the police in Victoria don't want us to know about it. They better have a really good reason as to why this is, because from what I've seen of this story as it was available publicly, uh, the details are shocking and it's horrific uh, what has happened in this instance. And it's also shocking and horrific the communities involved in this. Um, and yeah, that's the, as much as I, I can elaborate on this particular topic. Next up, guys, yesterday I talked about the Queensland Supreme Court ruling uh, in relation to the human rights um, with vaccine mandates not adhering to that, as the Supreme Court found. Now, I know a lot of individuals have tried to find technical reasons as to why that wasn't a victory or why it was a victory. But I saw this interesting exchange featuring Dr. Nick Coatsworth, who was once a part of the government team of advisors on these type of issues, and he was prominently promoted in the media. I can't remember what his e exact role was, but he was a part of this group. So let's have a listen to what he actually said on the Today Show this morning. And the Today Show, of course, is also notorious for pushing these mandates and, you know, playing into the whole coercion. So when you look at the Karl Stofanovic and the other host here, these people are, you know, getting the jab on TV and all sorts of nonsense. Let's have a listen to what Nick Coatsworth has to say about the Queensland ruling. Good morning to you. This is pretty extraordinary, isn't it? Can you walk us through the ruling? It is extraordinary, Carl. Before I do that, I can't do this segment without acknowledging my own role in the system that promoted vaccine mandates. But I think what this ruling does is it calls into question the basis upon which those mandates were put in. And it does so because the Queensland Police Commissioner, by law, 
had to examine the impact on human rights. And it was clear through this case and the evidence, which I read yesterday, that she did no such thing. She didn't give any regard uh, mm. to the human rights implications of the, these vaccine mandates. And so they were declared unlawful under Section 58 of the Queensland Human Rights Act. As you know, this caused so... So I'm not going to go into this any further, but you can go look this up yourself, Dr Nick Coatsworth, discussing this topic. And, you know, this has opened up the floodgates. Possibly we'll see other individuals take their employers to court over these mandates. And this does set somewhat of a precedent. And I think the dam walls on this issue, really, regardless of what the, um, you know, the Pfizer fanboys are saying at the moment, still defending everything that happened during that time, regardless of any of their nonsense, you're seeing a shift, you're seeing a change in this story, and you're seeing that people are demanding till this day accountability for what happened to them all those years ago. And the ramifications, of course, continue on. We still have certain industries where they're enforcing this type of nonsense. So yeah, interesting space to watch. Next up, guys, we have farmers this time protesting in Spain. Um, they blocked roads near the French border. Let me read the story to you. Spanish farmers in North northeastern Catalonia region hit the roads again Tuesday to protest about the Texas struggling blocking motorways with tractors including a busy linking busy highway linking Spain with southern France so you can see that they've strewn tires all over the road up there uh, demonstrators on the AP7 motorway began gathering at Pontos some 40 kilometers from the French border on Monday evening and started blocking the roads shortly after midnight cutting it off in both directions um, and these farmers are protesting around all types of issues to do uh, with the EU um, and the, the requirements that they have, which they say are hurting their industries. And you also have this instance here of Moroccan tomatoes being emptied by Spanish farmers. Let's have a look. Now, I'm not one to advocate for the wastage of food, but what's happening here is as it's coming through the borders, some of these trucks are being stopped, these uh, imported goods, I guess, into the country, which are harming the industries in that country itself. The post here says trucks carrying Moroccan tomatoes to Spain are stopped and emptied. The EU penalizes European farmers and favors important importation of non-EU products. Spanish farmers have had enough and are putting an end to this situation. So again, I don't advocate for the wastage of so much food in this manner, but you can see the frustration of these farmers in Spain now. And of course, we've discussed this many times over the news vlogs episodes. We've seen farmers in France itself, so we've seen it in Belgium, uh, of course, the Netherlands and different parts of Europe. It is an ongoing issue that these individuals are facing in those countries. Next story, guys, is around the New South Wales police and their uh, invitation or non-invitation to the Mardi Gras. So they've been disinvited originally a couple of days ago because of some, uh, it's a loopy story if you ask me. And now they've been re-invited, but now this time when they come to the party, they can't come in their uniform. They've got to come in, you know, a different dress code so people don't know they're police. Uh, let me just read a little bit of this article about this inclusive group uh, in the Mardi Gras, which is, I thought was all about inclusion and trying to bring, bring the communities together. Now, I understand before I go into all of this that a, there is a history of police violence that is alleged and, of course, documented in some instances against uh, the LGBTQI community, particularly in the past. There's a long history of that. Some people say it still continues on to this day, but you've had for a long time uh, police participa participation in the Mardi Gras and these type of events. And most recently, we've had an issue I haven't really talked about because I don't talk about these type of issues too much, the tragic death of a TV presenter and his partner at the hands of a New South Wales policeman. So that kind of triggered some of these instances. But, you know, as far as I can tell, that was all within, it was in within that community. So it's strange in a way that they're saying that it's somehow related to the police and making these connections. But it's interesting now to see that the police have been re-invited um, so that's what this article is about. New South Wales police officers will be allowed to march in Sydney's Mardi Gras parade this weekend, but not in uniform. Police Commissioner Karen Webb said the Mardi Gras board has reversed its early decision to ask New South Wales police not to attend, following the alleged murder of Jesse Baird and Luke Davis by serving officer Bo Lamar Condon. Commissioner Webb said that she was pleased to have come to an agreement with the board. I am delighted that the LGBTQIA plus officers, as well as other police, who are allies and supporters will be allowed to march this year as they have done for the past 20 years. Anyway, you can go read that story. You get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. 
Um, again, you know, inclusive group, excluding people now. They're telling people to hide their true identities as they march. It all seems a bit hypocritic to me, especially considering if we see the amount of virtue signaling around these issues, particularly from the police force themselves even, um, it's crazy to see that these issues still continue on and there's this animosity and hate. It's like this, they'll never move on from this past. Uh, and that can be said for many issues in this country. There are activist groups and activist classes within these type of communities which are hard on these topics and never want to let it go because they always need to be the victim and they always need to be oppressed even when you have commitments from organizations like the police to work with them right and embrace these communities and do these things regardless of that they don't care anyway next story guys is from the parliament of australia this is uh, australian parliament you have two um, is it senators or members of members of parliament? I think they're from the lower house. Independent MP and uh, Bob Catter dressed as um, pigs with a trough of uh, um, money. And they're doing all sorts of random things to have a go at Woolworths. Now, I don't want to say anything in particular about this story, but I just thought the ludicrousy of what our politicians get up to. This is parliament in a nutshell and whether they like it whether whether they're effective or not i mean it makes for a very interesting news story for sure um and they're having a go at Coles, they're having a go at woolworths for all the price price gouging and ripping off aussies and really just you know caring about the money do you think this is effective do you think this is an effective way for politicians to behave i i mean i find it quite entertaining uh from from that aspect and a lot of people are making memes from this and so on but yeah it does look a little bit ridiculous uh, next up, guys, uh, some news from the U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump um, is uh, closer, I guess, even though he does have it in the bag, in my opinion, the Republican nomination. He has once again defeated Nikki Haley, who does not want to give up. This time in Michigan, he has won the primary there. So I think he's won 64.3% to Nikki Haley, who's had 31.6% of the vote. So there are only two still contending for this race. So she's been defeated once again. And I love this um, meme from Roger Stone, uh, where they call her Nickery, um, a, a reference to Hillary Clinton, uh, Nikki Haley almost being like a Hillary Clinton type figure. And they've blended them two together for this image. I thought this was quite apt for the way that Nikki Haley is behaving at the moment when she should really just give the nomination to Trump because he has effectively defeated her in literally all the bellwether states and everything that happens at all of these Republican nominations in each of these states, it goes heavily towards Trump. I've talked about this before. You can watch my previous videos to get some ideas and thoughts on that. And of course, talking about Trump, his main contender is Joe Biden, um, who has been called a fragile old man or senile old man in a DOJ report. Uh, yet he persists as being the president of the United States during this time. And I thought this was interesting. You know, we used to see on television, Saturday Night Live, or even in Australia, the project or something, they mock Donald Trump, they make fun of him. But you rarely see that with Biden, right? This is despite the fact that he's stumbling over all the time, he's slurring words. Sometimes he just looks empty when you look at his face, like he's just frozen in time, right? He's got some sort of uh, memory loss issue. Like that's what the layman would look at that issue and be like. But they don't make fun of him that much, right? They're very reluctant to uh, make fun of him. But Italian television has taken on that task instead. So this is a great piece from Italy. And this is the second time they've done this. So let's have a look at what the world thinks of the US president who's currently in power. Buonasera. President Biden. President Biden. President, Mr. President. It's Biden walking up. Yep. The security service lift him up. He tries to be, act all cool. Oh, he's down again. <laughs> uh, it's ridiculous, but it's so much more ridiculous that the Europeans have had to now take up the mantle of doing the comedy and bagging this guy. Um, this story, guys, is from the UK. Um, Mary Poppins, film age rating raised over discriminatory language. Now, this is Mary Poppins from a long time ago, and I watched this as a kid as well. And I can't remember any of this discriminatory crap. I don't think kids would even pick up on whatever nonsense they're talking about. So let's have a listen to what's going on. Mary Poppins, a classic film starring Julie Andrews, has had its age rating raised by British film censors because it features discriminatory language. The 1964 film has been reclassified from a U, which stands for universal, 
to a PG for parental guidance. In it, a derogatory term originally used by the white Europeans about nomadic peoples in southern Africa is used to refer to soot-faced chimney sweeps that now exceeds our guidelines for U films, the BBFC said. Now, I'm not going to read any more of this. This is a film that is apparently set in around 1910. It's historically accurate in terms of the language that is used. Um, but this has happened before. Right? We've had films and stuff reclassified. We've had old movies where the scenes have been cut out. Uh, this is something that happens in China. Sometimes when you send a Hollywood film to China, they will deliberately take out certain scenes before it's even aired in China. But of course, now this is a form of a type of censorship in a way where we're reclassifying historical movies as being offensive when we just don't, when we should just appreciate the time that it was filmed in and, you know, shot in and understand the historical context instead of having to reclassify them. You know, eventually will one day, will they decide to ban Mary Poppins because it's, you know, not woke enough? I mean, it's possible. It, the cast might not be diverse enough, right? If we have a play about Mary Poppins now, they'll probably cast, cast a, a, a black person to play Mary Poppins. Like, this is the kind of world that we are edging towards and this is yet another example of that. Uh, staying on the theme of uh, classic movies, of course, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is also a classic. Um, and there's been so many different versions of it, of course, right? I think there's a new version out as well. And this is a really funny story of a, um, an event that was put out for kids to come see this magical Willy Wonka land. And it ended up with the police having to be called in because when the parents rocked up expecting something, you know, looking somewhat like this, which is what the... Um, people who had advertised the event did using AI. They made these AI rend renditions of what this event will look like. When they turned up, it was literally like a room like this. Um, and yeah, the cops were called. I th just thought that was hilarious. Just as to how bad this room <laughs> looks, the effort that they've gone into. Um, there's some other funny images of that floating around here. Uh, this is this is this is why the cops were called for the Willy Wonka uh, tour that that was organised. Apparently, it was forty dollars a pop uh, to get in there. Uh, but yeah, look, it looks ridiculous. There was even a funnier image. This one here. This is one of the individuals that they had. Uh, it looks like she's doing some sort of meth lab. Uh, that's how hilarious this is. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Now, last couple of episodes, I talked about Google AI, and we saw their woke AI when you gave it a prompt. Uh, it would say, you know, make me a British king. It would uh, knock out an image of someone that looks like me as a British king. This is the woke AI. Well, since those stories went viral and a lot of people started discussing, really there were so many other problems with the woke Google AI. The parent company that's related to AI endeavors with Google has lost $70 billion in market value from this incident alone, alleges the New York Post. So if you wanted to just uh, as a follow-up on that story I discussed, go read this article. I'm not going to read too much into it, but... They've lost about $70 billion, Google, already for going woke. Uh, I say it's a good thing. Last up, guys, uh, electric vehicles. Of course, we keep hearing about the future of electric, and we've seen Australia already. You know, when we have these storms and bushfires, some people don't even have power, and they can't charge their cars and you know all this kind of stuff. But Apple, Apple was actually touting itself as a potential future electric car maker. They invested heavily in this. They were trying to get people from Tesla over. This happened a few years ago, but they have now turned around. This is the, one of the most uh, you know, well-off companies in the world. If anyone can get into a new business, it's a company like Apple, but they have now decided to scrap all their plans to make electric cars in the future. So it's, 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 it's been a bit shocking, I think, for the industry to see Apple turn this way against electric cars because there was a lot of hope. I think they were planning a car for about $100,000 with all the typical i features. And look, it would have been a popular hit with Apple fans, no doubt. And um, they would have had a lot of um, scalability in terms of the markets that they could be in because they are so um, unanimous the world over. Yet, even Apple themselves have decided to scrap any ambitions to be involved in the electric car future at this present moment. And that also comes on the heels of companies like Mercedes-Benz, Ford, I believe also Audi, GM, also scaling back their push towards electric vehicles. So you're seeing a shift, this recognition of the fact that potentially uh, there has to be a different transition happening towards electric vehicles. You know, when we have coal, you know, diesel or petrol powered cars, uh, that seems like a more uh, better option for many people. And they're still purchasing those en masse because the infrastructure for electric vehicles is just not there. And even though governments and policymakers are trying to push this through as the way forward, it's just not happening in those terms. 
Anyway, guys, that is the end of my news vlog. Thank you for joining in again for another episode. I'll keep following up on that story related to the police um, suppression orders and the reports. I think it's a very important story to the community in this, um, you know, in Australia, in Victoria especially, we have to know because it's about our public safety and there's a few reasons that I believe it's, all, it's very much related to this and I can't get into those details at the moment. So I'll be following that very closely to see what happens with this suppression order. The court case is actually slated for sometime in May um, and I believe... Uh, the police want to keep it suppressed until that point um, which is r ridiculous in my opinion like which are the criminals and crimes that happen in our in our state uh, the, the details of least of the individuals involved in it um, their, their the town they hail from or whatever it is is made public to us right there's very few instances where it happens to this degree so it's very interesting if you're enjoying my work guys hit that subscribe button on youtube you can also hit the notification bell if you want to get updates as soon as i post otherwise if you're on x instagram facebook odyssey or rumble you can follow me at the real rukshan or you can find me on my website at www.realrukshan.com thanks guys see you next time